Stanley Milgram was a social psychologist, probably one of the most famous social psychologists of all time. And he's famous primarily because he conducted a series of experiments at Yale University in the early 1960s. In those studies, he um, invited some members of the Yale, the New Haven community, to come in to his laboratory to participate in what they thought was a study of memory and learning. And in that, they were asked to administer shocks to uh, another participant in the study, supposedly in an effort to try to understand the effects of punishment on learning. The participant's job was to administer a shock to them in an escalating series, starting with 15 volts and increasing in 15 volt increments up to 450 volts. Now, in fact, it was a study looking at obedience the willingness of the participants to engage in these destructive acts of obedience towards this other person. So the question Milgram was interested in was not the effects of punishment on learning, but the effects of authority on participants' willingness to engage in destructive forms of obedience. Prior to Milgram, People had thought that only psychopaths would, if you like, be willing or prepared to kill another person for no good reason. Whereas Milgram showed that through this procedure that normal people could be enjoined to administer ostensibly lethal shocks to another person because that seemed to be required of them in this experimental situation. And that, of course, raises profound questions, not just for psychologists, but also for philosophers, for sociologists, for political scientists, and for historians who want to understand why it is that these large-scale, sometimes genocidal processes come about, and why it is that normal people participate in them. For quite some time, with, uh, particularly with a close colleague of mine, Steve Reicher from the University of St Andrews, we've kind of been interested in reinvestigating, reinterrogating Milgram's conclusions. In particular, um, a conclusion that people often draw from the Milgram studies, and indeed typically draw, is that people have somehow programmed to obey authority and in particular programmed to obey the toxic orders of authority so the idea that we if you like blindly follow orders and that human beings somehow naturally do that when we look at milgram studies one of the things you find is that in in his paradigm if people were unwilling to continue unwilling to continue administering shocks to the learner that they were given a series of prompts or prods by the experimenter. The first of these was simply please continue or carry on. The second was the experiment requires that you continue. Then the third one was it's absolutely essential that you continue. And the final one was you have no other choice, you must continue. Now of those four prods, only the fourth is really an order. You have no other choice, you must continue. Now, if it's true that uh, people, if you like, um, naturally or inherently program to obey orders, then the one they should respond to most, as it were, enthusiastically is the final one. You have no other choice, you must continue. But actually what you find in the Milgram archive is that actually when people are given that prod, they tend to resile from uh, if you're following the experimenter and instead resist, instead start to disobey. There is a problem though because in Milgram's study people are only given the fourth prod after they've received the other three. So perhaps for example they've learnt or developed the skills to resist. So what we wanted to do, and we did this with uh, Megan Burney, who's a postdoc at the University of Exeter and also at University of St Andrews, was what we wanted to do was construct a paradigm in which we could look at the effects of those prods independently. So what we had to do to look at these questions anew was come up with a new paradigm. And the paradigm that we devised after some considerable kind of thought was one in which the participants come into the study, they actually can do it online, and they're exposed to a series of photographs of groups 
And these groups start with ones that are very noxious and unpleasant, like the Ku Klux Klan or Nazis, and through a series of 30 photographs, they become progressively more pleasant. So you get soldiers, and then you get traffic wardens, and then you get chefs, and then ultimately you get a family walking in the park. And the participant's task is to describe these groups using negative terms like stupid, lazy, moronic. Okay. It's a challenging task, aversive task, but it becomes progressively more aversive over 30 trials, just like the Milgram studies. So using this paradigm, we're able to ask the question, how far will they go under the force of particular prompts, and what proportion of participants will go to the very end, which are the critical questions we want to address. What makes participants continue, persevere in this aversive increasingly aversive task. Firstly, we were able to construct a, sets of, a set of stimuli that were indeed increasingly unpleasant. So we have 30 uh, images which are linearly aver increasingly aversive. So that's quite important from a, a sort of uh, psychometric uh, calibration perspective. The second thing is that we also, with a, a sample of uh, uh, independent participants, asked them to evaluate the extent to which the different prods were either an order or an appeal to science, an appeal to a shared identity. And indeed, as we expected, the fourth prod, you have no other choice, you must continue, was indeed seen to be an order, the, one, the prod that was most like an order. And at the same time, the prod the experiment requires that you continue was one that appealed to the scientific uh, identity that sh was shared between the participants and the experimenter. We've got these two outcome measures we're interested in. How far do people go? What percentage go all the way? Milgram's theory predicts that they would go the furthest more people would go to the end when they're given an order because that's what it's about. But actually you find that that instruction, that prod, is very unsuccessful. People bail out earlier and fewer people go all the way to the end relative to the condition in which they're told the experiment requires that you continue. So if it's about furthering the experiment, what you find is that people go further and more people go to the end. So again, if that's your goal, to get people to obey, what these findings show is that the order is peculiarly unsuccessful and the appeal to science, the appeal to shared identity is what's going to get that result for you. So in many ways, the take home message of this study is, is very straightforward. And it's that we have misunderstood what the Milgram findings show. Contrary what to what many people believe and what Milgram thought and argued, they don't show that people obey orders. In fact, they show very much the opposite, that if you give people orders, that is a basis for disobedience and resistance. And that on the contrary, what inclines people to obey and to participate in cruel, aversive acts is a belief that they're contributing to a valued and worthy cause. And that conclusion is one that prompts us to re-interrogate and to question our explanation for some of the most profound atrocities in human history. Ones that Milgram was interested in, but ones that we think he provided the wrong answers to, and that it's timely for us to reopen the questions.